Chào các mọi người, hiện tại mình đang có mặt tại uh, Sơn Hà Audio, phòng nghe tại chi nhánh Pasteur nha. Thì ở bên cạnh mình đây là giám đốc uh, kinh doanh của Avangard, một thương hiệu lo ultra high end đến từ Đức. Và hôm nay thì chúng ta sẽ cùng chia sẻ và tìm hiểu thêm về những chiếc lo kèn ultra high end mà các bạn đã thấy ở Việt Nam Avangard vừa qua. Và đầu tiên thì chắc mình cũng xin giới thiệu về bên cạnh mình đó là Jero, giám đốc kinh doanh của hãng. Và trước khi đi vào phỏng vấn thì chắc để bác giới thiệu về mình chút xíu nha. Hello, Mr. Jerome. Thank you for Hello, you. being here with us today. And uh, would you mind introduce yourself a little bit to our audience as well? Of course. Thank you for very much first for receiving me here in Vietnam. That was a few years that I haven't been there, so very happy to be back. Um, my name is Jerome, as you just pronounced it very well. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and I am French, and I work for Avantgarde Acoustic, the German horn manufacturer. I'm the international sales uh, manager for, for this company. And um, I'm here to talk to you a bit more precisely about the Generation 3 product line we have now released this year and in 2023, so last year. And um, we have many exciting news also to, uh, to release. So I'm here to tell you all my little secrets. So I was very interested about Avantgarde itself because you guys are only one of the few manufacturers that still produce like ultra high-end horn speaker and especially with the trio g3 that stand as the flagship of the brand itself that combine technology modern technology together with a very traditional horn design itself so what motivate avant-garde to pursue this uh, direction that's a very good resume of, of avant-garde the the function and the form the design and the technology And to answer your question, um, I would say that Avantgarde now is uh, developing horns for more than 30 years uh, with the same passion, but also with the same excitement in technology and based on the new tools we have, the new components, the new compounds, the new materials, and the new also technology, computer, science, we could always explore new territories and the G3 series is a good example of what we now can achieve with a lot of R&D. Um, G3 for generation 3, the company is more than 30 years. If you make a quick calculation, you can see that we don't launch models every year. We are not this kind of style of company because we put a lot of engineering, a lot of, the, of research behind. When we launch a, a range, it is ready to really step up a lot compared to the previous range. So the G2 XD line was released in 2015. Yeah. So now in 2023, we released eight years later, a brand new line. And the Trio G3 is our flagship, as you just mentioned. And, but also the rest of the speakers have been also following the same improvements. So what I will tell you about the G3 Trio is also true for the rest of the line, the Unos, the Duos, the Mezzos. And number one, what is uh, very important is that if you physically look at the trio here, you will feel like, oh, this is something déjà vu. Uh, it looks something familiar for many years. And it is true, we kept the DNA, which is the function of having those exponential horns. But except from those two horns, yes. every single part is different from compared to the former and the previous uh, line. And um, since you say that a lot of part in the G3 have been changed from the G2 itself, Especially, I was very interesting in the driver itself because the Trio G3 is a three-way loudspeaker that reach, that utilizes all three horn speakers itself, but the lower frequency can reach down to 100 Hz. It's very, interest, very impressive, almost unlike anything else in the horn speaker or audio industry. So, especially that you keep that high impedance, high sensitivity, but the sound itself sound very transparent, fast, and also good response, transient response. So it's almost like, unlike anything else in the horn speaker. So how can you engineer that driver itself to make it so like different compared to other and have that ultra high end quality detail? If you take a horn, it has a lot naturally of advantage a lot that especially in our uh, industry and in our requirement for quality is the ideal uh, um, um, concept. However, 
a horn has also some downsides. And the first downside is that it is so transparent, so fast, it will reveal so much what is behind the horn that if you just take an on-the-shelf driver, put it on the horn and play it, it will be a disaster. Yeah. If you design a crossover traditional with a lot of components and if you listen to it with a horn, you will hear it. You will hear also all the little details, they will be like enhanced and Im improved and so you have also the advantage to get a much better, more precise, much faster sound. But on the other hand, if you don't have a lot of technology behind to make the horn sounding good, you have the downside of the horn, what some people said, oh, a horn has the reputation to be uh, aggressive or sometimes yeah. to be um, uh, too analytic and, and projective. This is true if you don't work on behind the technology of, of the driver. So when you point out the driver, this is absolutely correct. There have been a lot of research over the years and the G3 is the, the, the following path of what has been learned all through the years. Keeping some concepts that has been trademarked for many years that are working very well, but also improving a lot of things. And number one, if, I, if you, you talk about the big horns, this is one thing, but especially in the new Trio and in the new G3 line, the Twitter is the first product that has been really totally redesigned. Because we also found out that in this part, we could do much better work and we need to redesign the driver itself, but also the horn itself. So the oh. Twitter horn is, is much bigger, much longer, with a much narrower throat. Yeah leading to a much controlled membrane with a much bigger uh, field and uh, electric field inside, so much control. It is our obsession, control of the membrane. And since we have a longer throat and we have a smaller membrane, we have more control and we have a much better definition in the, in the tweeter. This super tweeter now, as it is called, super tweeter, goes up to 28,000 hertz. So releasing a lot of information in the high end. Uh, um, I uh, frequency, sorry. Based on this, and since we redesigned the tweeter, we also had to redesign the rest of the drivers to also be coherent with the whole frequency response of the driver. So this is where we started. So if I go on with the drivers, we kept some very important milestone um, discovery we have made in the previous generation that we also improved. Um, number one is if you take in the mid-range and the low mid-range, we have this spherical membrane on the drivers and the air gap inside that will also help us to get rid of many components in the crossover and less parts on the crossover means also less pollution in the signal pass. So more definition, more control and more natural sound. So we have a very, very big voice coil the voice call is the biggest on the market, I believe, today, with a very high impedance of 27 ohm on the trio, meaning that we have a very, very precise control on the current coming into the voice call that controls the curse of and the speed of the membrane. Once again, if you can control the membrane the best way possible, in this case, you will be able to control also the propagation of the of the hair coming out from the horn. And in this case, this is what happened also with the G3, to have a much better frequency response, a much precise and a much focused sound, since always having a very natural and not projective sound. This is what has been achieved. And since we are talk about, have talked about the crossover, we will go focus in more detail on the crossover itself, especially when I see that you guys use um, a very specific uh, capacitor called natural cap that essentially is aluminum dipped into RN and cellular solution and also going further with the DC polarization of each capacitor itself. So why don't you like go with the traditional like ultra high end speaker design that go off so outsource like to Moondorf or Julun, but you have to design and use a specific um, capacitor like this. The same philosophy, the speakers are very different and our engineer team always try to design the components to the maximum themselves. But of course, we always refer to the best manufacturers we can find on our own specification. And on the case of the Nature Cap, um, when we redesigned the crossover based on the new Twitter capacity, the new mid-range and low mid-range also design that are 
different from the past, we also wanted to really make a big step up in the crossover part. And we have a very, um, very strong collaboration with the, with the manufacturer that we know for a long, long time that have very deep understanding in our very special drivers with a very high impedance and very high sensitivity. Thus, they developed for us, based on our knowledge, the nature cap, based on the, as you say, foil of, of aluminium dipped, um, dipped into oil, and also the CPC that has been kept from the past, but also improved here with the special uh, capacitors. When we, when we needed to have these capacitors, and if you look at the trio, if you see how many we have inside, yeah. there is not, it's a cost no object project here and we wanted to have the most crazy capacitors possible to drive this and the, our partners were was able to do it exactly on the specifications we want so of course uh, as you mentioned there are some very famous and very good um, capacitors on the market today but uh, this partnership we have with this company made us very close and it could exactly design what we needed on the polarization circuits, that's also very revealing about our philosophy. If you, as I told you, have any little pollution in the circuitry, you can hear it in, because of the horns, or thanks to the horn, depending as you, as you say. But in the case of the tweeter, the thing is that, as you know, 28,000 hertz, so the signal is going through zero, the, the wavelengths, many, many, many times. 28,000 times yes. per second crossing the zero. Every time the signal pass is crossing the zero, you have a little dielectric little moment where the, 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 the signal is just going through the board and going out. These little moments, for many of other manufacturers, it is not heard or not taken care of. In the case of the horn-loaded tweeter, if you listen to it, you will feel that this is something that can be annoying. Working on this polarization circuit at 100 volts allow us to take away this dielectric little pollution and makes it totally unleashed in the high-end frequency. Since the passive uh, crossover would be very interested in to the tube amplifier crowd or class A amplifier crowd, but I think for most like prospect um, user of the Avangard Trio G3, they were very interesting in the interest in the iTroy amplifier itself because it's a 300 watt class A design and zero feedback, no negative feedback. But the most impressive is it's a class A, but it's so elegantly um, integrated into the main speaker frame and also very cool to the touch itself. And the iTroy itself is the only few rare breed of the current drive amplification. So I would say like, how would you explain a little bit about the iTron technology and also why iTron made the avant-garde driver sound the best? So you, you're right. And to finish on the design of the G3 Trio, uh, not only the drivers has been improved, but also the overall design, because we also had the project to uh, propose an active speaker. For some reason, I will explain you. But to finish with the design, so not only the overall finishing has been totally improved and very, if you look at the former G2 and a new G3 trio, you can see in every details, the details has been really brought to, to, the, to the pinnacle. But also one very important feature that sometimes we forget to mention is the coplanar alignment of the drivers today. Because in the past, since our tweeter are offset, if you have the mid-range, the two mid-range, but the tweeter is on the side, yes. as you can see here. So if you have your speaker totally aligned, that's okay. But in a room like here, when you need to tow in or tow out your speaker, the tweeter will become offside, will not be aligned anymore with the rest of the, of the drivers. Since we have now the movable axis for the tweeter, we can now totally correct the alignment of the tweeter and all the three drivers together to have one single source point, yes. allow, allowing us to have a perfect three-dimensional and image in the middle. That was something that was not in the case with the XD line. So that's a very important point, the coplanar uh, technology. Okay. So um, to go back to the iTron, 
our um, main uh, engineer team always had the project to design the most accurate and coherent system. And if you take today the technology, um, a power amplifier, which is uh, as it is designed uh, for uh, from many, many, many years, for forever, is a power amplifier is not the right technical approach to ideally drive a driver, drive a membrane, drive a voice coil. Because the, to make it very quickly short, and I'm not going to be very technical, but when you have the conversion between the voltage to the current to drive the voice coil, to drive the membrane, you have kind of a buffer, a time, which is based on the resistance which is moving in the driver. So you are always have this kind of little offset of time which is not perfectly driving the membrane. When you take a conventional speaker, it's not so relevant because the drivers are bigger, they have a long ray move. movement, yeah. and you have to deal also with the feedback. So all in all, you can, let's say, hide it. But with a horn speaker, which is so fast, so well controlled, and so minimally moving masses, this is also something that you hear. So our team found out that if they could design an ideal amplifier, it would be a current drive amplifier. So it's not an amplifier, it's a converter. It will convert the voltage into current and drive each membrane directly with the precise currents that the driver needs at the frequency he needs. So we needed to design a digital crossover and you will tell me now, oh, but if this technology is so uh, innovative and so uh, perfect, why are we not using it in every other manufacturer? Every other manufacturer don't use it. Because it has some downsides also here, two main downsides that you cannot do it with any conventional speakers, but we can do it with the avant-garde speakers. We probably will be interested into the why it's not a separate power amplifier, especially because like for 300 watts of class A would be a very big power amplifier in traditional sense, especially class A. And also very interestingly because you guys, especially on the brochure of the Trio G3, you have one page about the Ohm's law itself that you and I and R, most people know about R is Ohm, I is a current, that's a very important part of iTron. But U is voltage, sometimes equal to loudness itself. That a lot of voice coil, a big voice coil, high impedance would require to make it loud enough. Is that the reason why that it's not possible to make um, this amplifier separate? Um, there are the two main reasons. And if you take a conventional speaker, that you cannot use a, a current drive, a driving converter. The number one is that the driver itself has a frequency resonance, oh, okay? And you cannot drive with the current this frequency resonance of the driver itself. Otherwise, it will just make it blow. So you need a technology with a crossover to take care of getting out this frequency resonance out of your crossover. That's a challenge, but that's possible, especially in, in the horn speaker, because since we have the horn, our membrane now much smaller, thus better controlled, and also with a better magnetic field. So we have the perfect knowledge to also identify the frequency and take it out from our crossover, active crossover. So that's number one reason. On a conventional speaker, you have bigger membrane, the frequency resonance will be also higher and more difficult to manage, to take out. So that's number one challenge. The second biggest challenge is that you cannot use a current drive to amplify a base unit. Uh, for some technical reason is that when you design a base uh, driver, you want the frequency resonance of the driver to be overloaded and to work as a turbo to really make it rumble. really rumble. Yeah. Yes. So if you deal this with a current drive, you will be impossible to drive it. It will be an infinite signal and it will not feel it. So it makes it as a no-go for a conventional driver, speaker, manufacturer to design a current drive for this technology. But once again, here with Avantgarde, it's a bit different because our subwoofer are active and they are separate 
from the satellite in the trio. But on the Uno and Duo, they are integrated, but also separate with the technology because the base are itself active. So since we have these two downsides totally ejected from the equation, we could focus and work on this technology. Once again, the purpose is not to say that what we design is superior, but this is the perfect extension of our horn concept. And thus, since we can do it, we had to do it. And the result, sonically speaking, is just, I let you listen and, and personally compare. And since we are also very flexible, we believe we don't want to impose our view to the customers. We still propose all our speakers in passive, as we described before, or if they are convinced, in active. So we leave the choice to the customer to decide. We don't want to be uh, one way always. And since we talk about the base itself, the base itself is a separate a space horn, which is the modernized version of the legendary base horn itself, together with like um, modern DSP, better driver, better amplification. But then the customer face a lot of options, a lot to choose from. Like how many should I go? Like two, four, or six, or even shall I go with a single drive or shall I go all out, go with twin drive? So what is your advice to the customer who are interested in how many sub should they purchase? I suggest to buy six, of course. <laughs> <laughs> the maximum. No, that, that's a joke, of course. Um, but you, you point out a very important uh, uh, um, uh, here a solution is that the base, when you have a single speaker with the base inside, you have no, no flexibility. You have to deal with it. However, the rooms are different. Could be small, could be big, could be damped, could be absorbing, could be very uh, bright. So we also believe that flexibility is the key. And since we have active subwoofer and since they are out of, of our uh, satellites, in this case, we found out that developing new drivers allow us to have ex explore also more different options. And the first one is that, as you mentioned, we have now a single space on with only one driver inside. So when you have a pair, you have two 12 inches. There are, this is a 12 inch, but a brand new 12 inch with a much higher output than before. A brand new technology in the membrane using carbon, Kevlar, pepper, and using a huge magnetic field of 1.15 Tesla that will not talk to anyone, but 1.15 Tesla, there is only one place in Europe, one factory that can build such a magnet field. There is, there is only one. And it requires a huge technology to do it. And since we have this extremely big magnetic field together with a very uh, long excursion membrane and a very stiff um, uh, moving, ma mass. moving masses yeah. together, yeah. we could redesign the whole loading system itself and we expand it for more than 50% inside. So if you look at the internal subwoofer uh, uh, physical shape, now the funnel is almost 46% longer than before, allowing us to control the wavelengths coming out from the subwoofer and expanding into the room into a more than 180 degrees. So it's not a front-loading driver that is pushing air to you, that you will feel like a boost. It will just wrap you together. Then about the numbers, it really depends on your room. It really depends on your taste. The more you will add subwoofer will not automatically mean that you will have only more power. It will also create like a virtual membrane, coupling the membrane together, moving air together and moving the whole air into the, into the room. The feeling is that at the end, the, the base is so natural, so deep, going so deep in the feeling it's something that is very interesting to, um, to experience when it is lifetime. So we have many customers, they start with two or four, like it is here. Adding another pair will help you to go deeper and have even a more balanced response in the low end. So there are a lot of interest in avant-garde speakers itself. A lot of people visit showroom, visit show, and very impressed about the sound itself. But what they like, very worried about is the way to set it up 
the way to, to integrate the main speaker, the main hall speaker together with the subwoofer, how to integrate it so seamlessly because at AV show we have it in center and in this room we have it back in the center wall. So and so on the brochure in the manual itself there's a lot of way there's side wall, there's back wall, there's central, lateral, vertical, horizontal. There's so many ways to set it up. So what is your advice for people who are interested in upper class speaker but are worried about how to integrate the subwoofer and the main speaker so so this is a, a question which is which is important you're right and there is no uh, written answer and and uh, experience is is coming from the field is coming from the different uh, scenarios that we are experiencing the the thing is in the past, our subwoofer, the space on, the base ons, they were less powerful as they are now. So we have more possibilities now because they are more powerful. Our, of course, you can set up the volume so you can really totally tune in the volume. But what we found out after uh, uh, some times now, we have the, the 3OG3 on the, on the field for more than a year now, is that the power of these uh, uh, space ons is, is very big. And my goal is to train our distributors, our dealers on the field, on the different scenario they can meet. Of course, every room is different, but we can now start to have a good um, understanding on how to optimize uh, the, the space on placement. And I would say there is no perfect rules, but how they are set up now in this room makes a lot of sense to my opinion. And, um, we have to deal in some occasion with constraints that are due to the electronics or because of the uh, configuration of the room and you cannot do like in this room for instance we have some constraints we have to deal with but yeah, i would say if you have an ideal room with no constraints it will depend also on your taste some customers in west uh, um, europe western europe will have different tastes than from china for instance they will have a base with more uh, depth or more dynamic and with the versatility of our speaker I would say you can adapt to the taste of the people so in Germany for instance if you go to our showroom we have this speed the, the bass sounds together in the middle yeah. and they are set it up together also for different reasons number one it helps to have a very good looking system that's that's a part of it and for the pictures it is also important to show it and the result in our showroom which is perfectly well controlled the showroom acoustic is perfect it's absolutely bril brilliant now if you go into a more difficult room and depending also on your tastes i will advise if you feel to have some problems having the spe the dry the space zones in the middle to split them in each corner and to use the side walls to and, and also the bottom, because since you have always one on the floor, using yeah. the bottom will also help to have a diffuser, a natural diffuser, to also control the wavelengths. So, no golden uh, recipe, unfortunately. I'm really sorry, but this is the truth. Everybody is different. Every so situation is different. My role here is to come to train our distributors, to train our dealers, to give them the flexibility to understand if there is a, a question, a remark, a problem, to, to treat it. We talk about the acoustic performance, how to integrate it so well. Was there a part of Avangard itself that always impressed audience? Because not only because realistic kind of sound, but also the visual impact, the visual beautiful to look at itself. So, and for the GOG3, you guys offer a lot of colorway, a lot of finish that very unique in the audio industry, almost unlike anyone else. So why are you going so far? Why are you so, put so much emphasis on the uniqueness, the artistry of the speaker itself? Why is that um, once, always one of the strong points of Ivan We um that, that's also a very important part and uh, you, you, you identified a very important uh, point here. Um, as I told you at the beginning of our interview, the form and the function, there are two things. But we can also see the trend of the market and it was not really maybe the case 30 years ago when audiophiles used to have dedicated room to listen to music. 
but more and more the system, audio system, is migrating into the living room. It's, it's part of the, of the furniture of the, of the family or, or of a household. In this case, um, most of the time, you're not always listening to music. So if you have to, we believe, deal with a speaker which is ugly and it's only making sense when you play it, that's something we didn't want. And things we have the horns, and the horns could be like a piece of heart, a, a sculpture, a sculptural form. Our designer really took a lot of care in redesigning the speaker with a monolithic part for the itron. If you can see here on the on the side, you can of course choose the different uh, veneer for the wood and the color of, of for the horns in order to totally integrate it in your living room or in your living environment. And even for some audiophiles, we have the chance to have a dedicated room. Uh, I know that when you listen to the system and the system inspiring you just by looking at it, it's also part of the, of the experience, the emotion experience of the avant-garde system. And thank you so much for being here with us today and sharing a lot of technical knowledge and technical thank you, details. You. And thank you so much. And we hope to see you again someday in the Vietnam show as well to meet a lot of and I'm My pleasure. right here. My pleasure. Thank you for your questions. It was really extremely detailed and I thank you for your curiosity and your analysis. And I am really hope to see you again uh, at the next show uh, uh, here uh, together with our distributors and, and our fans. Thank you so much. Và lời cảm ơn cuối cùng thì mình cũng xin gửi đến Sơn Hà Audio cũng như Đông Thành Hòa Phúc đã tạo cho mình điều kiện để có thể trò chuyện cùng với giám đốc kinh doanh của Avangard cùng tìm hiểu sâu hơn về hệ thống lo kèn trị giá 8 tỷ đồng này. Và cuối cùng cảm ơn mọi người đã theo dõi. Nhớ like, share và subscribe nha.